Okay guys, today I'm going to give you a little walkthrough on uh, changing over one of our teammates guns from uh, Tamaya to Dean's. I've already got the Tamaya cut off here, um, but one thing to keep in mind is it's always a good practice to cut them one at a time, the wires. Uh, it doesn't really matter on the gun side because there's no power source, but on a battery, if you cut them both at the same time, you'll short, you'll cause a short and you could destroy your battery. So it's a good practice just to always cut them one at a time. And normally on a battery, I'd also tape up when they're both cut. I would tape up one side, uh, again, to prevent a short until I'm ready to work on it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and strip the wires going into the gun now. I'll note that these wire strippers I'm using are uh, very, very, very dull. But, you know, they work. You just got to be careful not to uh, push down too hard and pull braid off of the actual conductor. So as I'm doing all this, I have my soldering iron heating up. That way, when I'm ready to use it, it's ready to go. And as soon as I get these prepped, I also twist them so that when I tin them, they don't get frayed. Because there's nothing worse than trying to solder something that's all frayed. So get them nice and clean. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get my little helping hand station here set up. This is incredibly useful for soldering. It makes everything a thousand times easier. If you don't have these and you're going to be doing any soldering, I recommend getting one. So uh, go ahead and get your wire on one end and then the connector on the other. On a gun, the connector is always going to be male, and on a battery, it's always going to be female. And I forgot heat shrink, so don't forget your heat shrink. Go ahead and get that on there. Push it down as far down as you can on the wire because you don't want it to get shrunk before you're ready to shrink it and it gets really hot when you're soldering sometimes. So you want it further away from where you're soldering until you're ready for it. Now before you solder, you also want to make sure you have the polarity right. So uh, the little plus sign on the bottom of the connector goes to the red and the minus sign goes to the black. You don't want to mess that up. Now I'm going to put flux here on the contacts. Um, and basically it just cleans it and it helps the solder adhere much much better so if you're having problems with solder sticking one thing I would try is using either flux core solder or applying flux like I'm doing so I've had more luck applying flux onto the contacts so let's see if we can't get a little better shot of this now I the way I solder is I just tin uh, the lead here and then I tin the contact and basically, so you're just putting solder on the iron and then touching it to the lead and you'll see it transfer to the lead and then you're touching, doing the same thing to the contact on the actual connector. And then you, once you have that done, uh, you can see my soldering tip is a little bit worn, but I get them held together and then I put more solder on my soldering iron and then I just heat it up and they'll all solder correctly. I usually grab something else to kind of help hold it down. Sorry, I'm kind of blocking the camera. And then you'll see it when you're ready. Uh, pull the iron away, and then you might have to hold it down a little bit longer with whatever tool you're pushing it down with. And we'll see if that's going to be good. So go ahead and pull it out and take a look at it. And don't burn yourself. So I'm not really happy with the way that the angle's coming up off there, so I'm going to readjust these little helping hands here and see if I can't get it to look a little bit cleaner. See how it's kind of risen up there. So I'm going to push on it here. And I'm going to heat it up. And once it heats up, you'll see it turn to liquid, and you can kind of push down on it better. Take the heat away, let it dry, and then take a look at it as soon as it's ready. And that looks a lot better. And don't bring yourself again. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and put the heat shrink on this side. I like to do the heat shrink one at a time. It doesn't really matter but I'm going to slide it up over the connector 
and I'm going to push it against the connector and be careful as you're heat shrinking it near the connector because you don't want it to retract down and expose the contacts. So I kind of, you just use a lighter and I kind of go very gently. Okay, and if you do it too much, it'll shrink back and then do the opposite of what you want. So that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the connector back in my helping hands and get it set up for the negative lead. And I'm twisting this again to go ahead and make it easier for when I tin it. So I get everything into ready. And then I'm going to go ahead and tin these both. Uh, I'm going to hit them with flux first. Solder on my iron. And then I'm just going to tin the lead. And then get a little bit better there. And of course I forgot heat shrink. <laughs> so it's not too late. I'm going to go ahead and put that on as soon as this dries a little bit more. Alright, get that down, push it back, get it back in the clamp here. And I'm going to go ahead and tin the connector now. see the solder just adheres very easily now. Got it all set up and I'm gonna go ahead and touch the iron onto the lead touching the contact and you should see it melt here and then when you take the soldering iron off you want to keep holding down until it's cooled down enough let it cool some more and then as soon as it's cooled down you can check and make sure it's gonna stay so it may take you know 30 seconds or so alright I'm gonna unclamp it here it looks pretty good it doesn't move at all Go ahead and slide the heat shrink up. Grab my lighter here. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, heat this up here while hopefully not burning myself at all. Looks pretty good now. Alright, there you go. Now you've got a Dean's connector on your gun. Just need to switch over your batteries. Uh, just the same exact steps. So, we should be good to go. Thanks for checking out our video, guys. And don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe.